<clears throat> All right, today's uh, webinar is to introduce a new program being launched with Ingram Micro and with EMC called FISEC. The FISEC program launch is accompanying a, infra a proven infrastructure guide that has been developed by EMC Labs, and we're going to be introducing that infrastructure guide today and talking about the purpose and the need for that document and the benefit it brings to you as a reseller of, technology, of the technologies that will be involved in this particular project. We have many people on the call today that will, all, that will be participating in introducing themselves and their roles. Uh, I will be primarily hosting the conference today. I will be speaking uh, on the various aspects of the program. I had a lot to do with writing the document that you're going to be seeing today, and we'll be going over the document in detail. I'm pretty excited to, to do this today. This has been a long time developing. We've been working on this for several months, uh, and so we're very excited. This is the first time that we've publicly uh, revealed this, uh, this effort called FISEC, and so all of us on the phone today are very excited for you to have joined, and thank you very much. At the end of today's call, you'll be getting, uh, you'll be getting some information, uh, and that information that will be presented to you will give you an opportunity to get more involved and engaged in this particular program. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, be introducing a few people here at the, ga at the start. Uh, just letting you know right now in front of you on my desktop, you should be seeing a shared desktop. You may also want to bring up the chat window, and if you have any questions or comments during the webinar today, feel free to ask away in the chat window. I have front with me today Ken Mills from EMC, who will be helping to moderate the chat window for me. And so feel free to ask questions away. Uh, you will not be interrupting me to ask questions. Um, there, there's a Ken and a few others that are standing by waiting to assist you if you have any questions or any comments. <clears throat> what you have in front of you on my desktop is a picture of my lab at Physical Security University. On the left-hand side, you see a picture of the EMC Isilon stack. We'll be, referring, we'll be using and referring to the Isilon stack later on today. In the middle, you have the proven infrastructure guide that we will be launching at the end of today's webinar. You'll be getting an email uh, when EMC publishes that document, and you'll be the first to gain access to this document for your participation on this call. On the right-hand side, you have uh, an image uh, of the lab behind me with a couple of the Bosch cameras that we'll be highlighting during this call today. Let's go ahead and get started. I have a PowerPoint which I will show. All right. Today we're talking about FISEC, which is a proven infrastructure for video surveillance. This proven infrastructure involves multiple manufacturers. It involves EMC, Cisco, VMware, Genetech, and Bosch. Of course, at Ingram Micro, we are proud to be the ones sponsoring and also distributing all of the products uh, that are involved in this particular solution. Let's talk about today's agenda. Today, we're uh, going to be, I'll go over the FISEC team members, and I have a few people on the call that will be introducing themselves and talking about their role in the team and also the role of their company in, the team, uh, on this, in this process. We're going to talk about enterprise video surveillance in general, talk about the opportunity and the business problem that's at stake. We're going to talk about the IP camera and why IP cameras are special and why this is a device that you need to recognize as a content producer in a modern IP network. We're also going to talk about architecture. A great deal of discussion around FISEC is the infrastructure architecture. If any of you on the, on the call are familiar with vSpec, you might be familiar with previous proven infrastructures that EMC has launched. And this particular one that we're doing is very similar to that of, of vSpec. And so we'll be reviewing that architecture and reviewing that stack so that you can understand it. After we're done with that, we are going to cover the validation process that was performed at EMC Labs, and we will talk in detail about what was done and how the validation process happened and the documentation of that process in the implementation guide. <clears throat> Finally, I will uh, show you some of the pages from the implementation guide that will be launched at the end of, this, at the end of today. You will get an, uh, an invite to, to be able to obtain that publication from EMC. 
and I will go through the details of what is in and what you can expect to see in the implementation guide. At the end of today's call, we will talk about how to get more engaged, meaning how can you become a partner, uh, join the FISEC program, how you can become a partner with some of the key uh, manufacturers involved in the solution, and what you can do next to get engaged in this exciting opportunity. All right, we're now going to talk uh, to and hear from the FISEC team members. As you can see here, the FISEC team is made up of Ingram Micro, EMC, Bosch, who's the principal camera manufacturer in our solution, Genetech, which is a software manufacturer of a video management platform, VMware, who most of you probably already know, and Cisco. I will start now by turning it over to Brian from the Ingram Micro EMC team and let him introduce the EMC component of the solution. Thanks, Guy. Um, as Guy mentioned, uh, Brian Mangan, I am the vendor business manager at Ingram that covers EMC, and uh, we are very, very excited to have everybody on today. Uh, we've done a lot of work on building this solution for everyone. Uh, if you're not an EMC partner already, we have folks um, on the call and ready to assist you to become an EMC partner. Uh, I believe Clint Como is our market development executive. I believe he is on the call. He is our market development executive that covers ISLON and has been uh, very involved in this process. Uh, and we also have Rebecca Moses who uh, helps us uh, get new partners onboarded and up and running if they're not familiar with EMC. Great. So we have a, a variety of people from e <clears throat> on from EMC. We also have with us today um, Sean Anitas from Ingram Microphysical Security Team. Uh, do you want to take a minute, Sean? Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Guy. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We are also very, very excited about this program. There's some pretty big names in the uh, surveillance world on that page you're looking at. but. Uh, really quick, so my title is Senior Business Development Manager East. Uh, essentially what that means is really anything security on the east, uh, I could be a starting point for you. Uh, I think another good thing to mention is that we have a full team. So when it comes to the installation uh, design, even the potential for us to be on site, uh, you can follow your question through me. My contact information will be up on a, a later slide in this presentation. Uh, and we can get you the right parts and pieces to uh, to help you in the installation and deployment of these products. Great, Sean. Thank you very much. We also have with us today representation from Genetech. Eric, I don't know if you uh, are able to chime in for a second, if you'd like. Yes, thank you. Good day, everyone. Uh, as everyone's already said, we're very excited to be a part of this uh, package and this offering as well. Uh, so today I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have uh, on Security Center, which is our video management platform, uh, which is being included in this bundle. And uh, Thank you, Guy. We also have uh, joining us today uh, Brian Bukowski from uh, Bosch. Brian, I did not do an audio check with you. Are you on and able to hear me, and can you respond? Yeah, Guy, I'm on. I got my mute off. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Bukowski. I'm the key account manager for Bosch Security, um, located out of Chicago. My whole role with Bosch, uh, as of January 1, is to work uh, specifically with Ingram Micro as a support piece, as a sales piece, um, to help with presentations for end users, for for um, bars, and and as you saw in the previous uh, slide, that was our megapixel and our 1080 HD dome, which we'll get into a little late, little bit later. Thank you, Guy. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So as you can see, uh, we have quite a bit of participation from a variety of team members. Um, all of the team members you see here have been participating in the drafting and the creation of our FISEC validated solution. And all of the team members here are very engaged in helping you to market and sell to customers that are in an enterprise space for which the FISEC solution will fit. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and talk about enterprise IP video surveillance. Once again, if you have any questions or comments during my presentation, 
feel free to chat away in the chat box and Ken or one of the team members will respond. Enterprise IP video surveillance. <clears throat> Why do I say the word enterprise? The FISEC uh, infrastructure guide or proven infrastructure is designed for implementations that have more than 250 cameras. This is not a solution designed for a small 16, 32, 64 camera deployment. This is for large enterprise IP video surveillance situations. Enterprise IP video surveillance starts to take on characteristics that require a major investment in infrastructure and also a major investment in software capable of handling this type of environment. In addition, the camera type needs to be modified uh, and a camera manufacturer needs to be selected that can fit the needs of this type of demanding environment. <clears throat> Enterprise IP video starts to task, tax the resources that a network admin uh, has available to them. Switching infrastructure starts to become a, a challenge. Storage becomes a challenge. Uh, infrastructure to outline sites becomes uh, an issue. And what they're used to deploying in terms of uh, compute resources uh, will also be challenged as IP video definitely demands more compute resources. <clears throat> in addition, enterprise IP video surveillance for larger than 250 camera deployments is usually for customers or end users that have an environment that is mission critical meaning the reason they have deployed IP video surveillance is because they've made that as a decision because whatever they're monitoring or protecting is of mission critical importance. Therefore, the IP video application itself becomes mission critical. These situations can be in medical environments where protecting uh, patient data or the patients themselves is, abs uh, is absolute of importance. It could be in casino and large gaming environments where a regulatory requirement uh, dictates that they have this type of IP video surveillance. It could be in transportation authority environments where they are also uh, required by regulation to have uh, video surveillance of this nature. It could be any other type of campus environment where IP video surveillance is considered of absolute importance for protecting resources, protecting intellectual property, or protecting the employees themselves. The FISEC was designed for a centralized model for video capture, meaning it would be an IT department that is required to bring the video into a centralized location and store it at a centralized place. So all of what we're going to talk about today is built around a centralized model. IP video demands resources of a network. Got, uh, as IP video has improved over time, we're reducing the amount of bandwidth streams that are required and the amount of storage. But because of the popularity of IP cameras, more and more of them are being deployed and more and more software to analyze that video is being used. Consequently, although we may reduce the individual bandwidth stream of one camera, we increase the overall bandwidth requirements by deploying more cameras and we increase the compute requirements because we have more software managing these devices than we did previously. More customers want centralized control of IP camera devices. They no longer want siloed deployment. They want to be able to manage all cameras from a central place and have a general guarantee that the cameras that they're deploying will be easily managed. IT departments that are starting to take over the IP video deployments are starting to realize that these little camera boxes that they're putting up all over their company uh, are just almost sometimes just as complex as a small workstation or PC. So therefore, these devices require management and they require attention by the IT department. Complex integration is needed in order to have all of the components needed to manage an IP video environment, such as storage, networking, compute, application support, and further infrastructure requirements that might be needed in a data center, such as cooling and power. All of these things can be rather complex. So you as a partner have, have a great opportunity to pursue IP surveillance environments 
and have an opportunity to upsell quite a bit of storage, networking, servers, virtualization. But this, com this integration can be rather complex. This is the primary reason why we wrote the FISEC infrastructure guide. The reason EMC Labs put so much time into proving this infrastructure is to reduce your risk as a partner. You have less risk uh, in deploying a solution that you know that you have validated that works. In this case, EMC and Ingram Micro have done this work for you. We have validated this to make sure that this particular solution works in the configuration that we specified, and it will work at the capacities that we show in the document that we're going to provide to you today. So this is a great way for you to go to market in a very, a very uh, profitable market space. Another reason why you should get involved in this is because convergence of virtual infrastructure is occurring with mission critical operations and the software that run those operations. IT departments have made significant investments in virtual infrastructure, infrastructure that runs their VMware environment, for example. They are looking for opportunities to merge that virtual infrastructure with other operations in the organization. Physical security is a giant target for that convergence. This FISEC architecture shows you how this integrates with an enterprise customer's existing VMware virtualization infrastructure. Consequently, you are able to assist your customer in deploying this in an existing vir virtual infrastructure and consequently can provide them with a significant and great value by justifying a further expansion of their storage and of their compute and other virtualization uh, purchases. The IP camera is becoming a significant uh, um, is becoming a significant device in modern networks. It used to be it was an analog device that we brought in with a coaxial cable to a central point, and that that central point would provide some level of management. And this was something that our facilities departments handled. But as regulatory uh, requirements have increased, as the demand to provide uh, video uh, evidence has increased, as the need to protect our resources has expanded even further, the cameras be have become more and more sophisticated. The technologies included in the cameras, such as the Bosch cameras that you see displayed here, are, are incredible. I mean, if you think you know what an IP camera is, you need to look again. Because IP cameras, the technology behind them is exponentially growing every year. We have the ability to integrate with power over Ethernet now. We have edge recording in cameras now. We have built-in infrared and low light and wide dynamic range capabilities. We have full audio support, bi-directional. Cameras are capable of producing multiple streams now. Cameras can be either wireless or wired. There is a significant number of cameras that have higher resolutions, 1080p and greater. There's compression mechanisms now being used with cameras. Cameras now have event controls built into them where we can trigger events to occur, either based on motion, movement, tamper, door open, whatever the case may be. We have the ability to do alarm and event control on camera devices. Cameras are integrating with software to provide analytics so that we can solve very unique business problems in specific markets. So therefore, video analytics software is blowing up in terms of its integration with IP video camera devices. This is happening in a variety of markets in a variety of ways. So the IP camera device is becoming more and more sophisticated. And as it does so, we need an infrastructure to support those devices. This is why the FISEC infrastructure is so needed, and everything that we're going to be showing you today is completely compatible with the entire Bosch camera lineup. And so the Bosch camera lineup that, you're, that you see here has a wide range of cameras that make it possible for you to deploy in almost any customer environment, whether they need a small, low-cost uh, little dome camera or whether they need a very high-cost, high-resolution PTZ outdoor camera uh, there's an entire lineup of cameras that make uh, capturing whatever event a customer needed possible. 
The FISEC infrastructure has at its core the Genetech software. Genetech is a video management platform which allows you to capture all the streams coming from these devices and bring them in for either live viewing or for archive viewing, which is a, which is a significant need of your uh, potential customer or even for your existing customer. All right, that's uh, quite a bit to throw out there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to chat uh, in the window. I'm now going to move on to the FISEC architecture, and we'll talk specifically about how the FISEC architecture solves this issue around IP cameras. Before I do so, um, uh, Brian, is there anything that you wanted to say regarding the Bosch cameras before I move on? If you go, okay, there's the slide. Just a couple quick highlights um, on some of the things that Guy had talked about. We typically listen to our customers when we're building these devices. And a couple of the points I want to touch on real quick, um, some of the important points, one would be the edge recording, uh, and that's in the Wi-Fi camera you see in the middle there. All of our cameras come with SD slots, so we can hold camera, we can hold video right at the camera. And why this is important is for a couple reasons. We can, we can basically guarantee our customer that we'll never lose video, even if the network goes down. If the network goes down, we're still holding video at that camera on that SD card, which is a nice reassuring fact to give to the customer, because in this day we're not selling the guy with the checkbook. Oftentimes we're selling to the guy, <clears throat> excuse me, that runs the IT department, because they're very protective of what they put over their network, so we can hold video at the camera stream it to an iSCSI server at 3 or 4 in the morning when the network is nice and quiet. Um, and the other thing I wanted to touch on was the video analytics. There's a lot of folks out there making video analytics, and you need to be on their uh, PC platform or, or so all this other stuff that you have to buy. And what we offer now is we put our analytics, we put that metadata right in the camera. So there's no software to buy. It's right in the camera. Once it goes into configuration, it automatically recognizes that and makes it real easy to set up. We offer 14 analytics, eight of which you can run simultaneously. So that's just kind of a couple of the important facts on, on uh, those features that I wanted to highlight. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's talk about the FISEC architecture. Uh, this has taken quite a bit of work to validate, test, and document this entire architecture. What you're looking at right now is a physical diagram of the architecture. At the core of this diagram is a very important product called EMC Isilon. If you don't know what Isilon is, Isilon is a network attached storage, but it's not just an appliance box NAS that you might if you're not used to what this is, this is actually a cluster of several nodes that expose to you a single file system in which we can use as a video archive target. The beauty of this is it allows software such as Genetech, one repository to store all video archive data. This is a significant advantage because as you get to larger and larger camera counts, the amount of video storage you require grows exponentially, especially when you're in environments that have a regula regulation that has you recording over three months. Some environment, some regulations have you go almost up to a year. I've been in prison authorities where we have to have it for three years. So the longer we store the data and the more data we're getting in, the more video, the greater the need we have for a uh, cluster-based NAS system like uh, EMC Isilon. EMC Isilon serves as the core of this entire architecture, providing the single and the largest uh, expense in the project because this is where we have to provide all of the disks for recording the uh, uh, video data. In addition to the EMC Isilon, we also have a virtualization infrastructure. This virtualization infrastructure comprises Cisco UCS, Cisco Nexus Fabric Interconnects, and the EMC VNX uh, lineup of products. The reason why we require EMC VNX is the Cisco UCS blades and the hypervisors running on them 
need a primary target to write their data to, specifically the virtual hard disks. The Cisco UCS infrastructure, the EMC VNX, and the UCS Fabric Interconnects, and the VMware hypervisor software that runs on that, makes up what we call the virtualization infrastructure. This infrastructure is very similar to that of the EMC vSpec. Cisco UCS offers a, uh, what is called a blade series chassis, it, uh, the B series chassis, uh, or not, not, not sorry, not the B series chassis, but it offers a Cisco UCS chassis. We chose in this architecture to include the B series blades. The chassis could, could comprise many different types of UCS blades. The ones that we tested in this particular environment were the B230 product line. This allows for maximum density. It also uh, allows for a reduced cable count from running cables from the UCS to the fabric interconnect and into, into the rest of your environment. The B-Series Blades provide you with a, a great infrastructure to install your VMware ESX servers uh, so they can serve as hypervisors to provide the Genetech uh, requirements. By the way, Genetech runs on Windows Server Windows 2008 or 2012 server. Uh, and so you would install those virtual machines on the VMware hypervisor running on the UCS blades. The EMC VNX product provides the target for primary disk storage. One of the tremendous advantages of Cisco UCS is the interoperability with, UC with the fabric interconnects. This provides a high speed, easy to configure fabric interconnect that provides both connections for the EMC VNX fiber channel and also connections for uh, your 10 gig ethernet. It also will provide the uplinks to a Cisco Nexus 10 gig E switch so we can connect to the rest of the customer's networks. This pretty much represents the entirety of the FISEC architecture with the networking devices being Nexus, uh, the Cisco Nexus 5548 switch to the virtualization infrastructure with at the core of the EMC Isilon NAS product. I have with me today Ken, uh, Ken Mills from EMC, who is, uh, who's been participating in the development of this infrastructure. Ken, would you like to say anything in regard to the FISEC architecture before I move on? Yep, sorry, I gotta find the correct button on the phone here. Uh, I think I think uh, you hit you hit it on the on the head here, and I think one key point for the partners in, on the call is to understand that infrastructure, whether it be the network infrastructure, the compute infrastructure, and in our case the the storage infrastructure, it's it's critical to the success of the customer opportunity. Also, we're hearing more and more from enterprise class customers that they do not want to buy bundled software and storage black box appliances because. They don't want to have to buy new hardware every time they upgrade their software, every time they want to get a new set of features or add functionality. So having a enterprise class infrastructure like this really enables the customer for a long-term successful surveillance deployment, which is ultimately what you and the customer are after. Yeah, great. And I'd like to add also that everything in here, the VNX, the Isilon, the UCS, the Fabric Interconnects, are all completely redundant, meaning that these are built for an enterprise environment that are what an enterprise environment expects. So you're going, to be de you're going to be deploying something and recommending something that meets all their enterprise requirements. Also, more it also this entire solution works not only for physical security and video surveillance, but it also works for virtualization of servers. So this infrastructure can be utilized in a cross-purpose fashion, which is another attractive reason why deploying this architecture is, is highly recommended. Okay, we're now gonna move into, and Ken, if you wanna stay on with me, uh, I may have you address some of the stuff in here as well. But let's talk about the solution that we validated. Um, EMC has a, a uh, a lab facility for performing testing uh, in interoperability testing. And there is inside that a dedicated physical security lab. Uh, Ken, do you want to address the size and scope of that lab and what resources EMC is committed to this process? Yeah, so, so EMC security lab is housed in our uh, data center in Raleigh, Durham, RTP. 
It's one of the largest data centers in the world, and we have several rows of that extremely large data center dedicated to the validation and continued validation and continued testing of our video surveillance applications like Genetech, where we can work closely with our partners and Genetech to make sure that we understand the limits and the performance specs that we can get out of this system so that when you as partners go develop and deploy these solutions for your customers, you know that they will perform as advertised and they will uh, maintain the high quality that your customer expects and you won't lose video due to performance or you know untested scenarios. So we do extensive testing and regular testing with Genetech to make sure that the performance is, is what you need. Great. Um, so, and I would just like to say also, as part of the commitment that EMC has made to this process, EMC shipped us at Ingram Micro for our physical security university labs. They shipped us an entire Isilon cluster, a four node cluster, which we've also been performing validations on and, and testing and helping our customers when they need it and allowing our customers to log in remotely to check it out and test it and work with it. And uh, our, e our Ingram Micro field team has also been working with customers to show them the product live and in person. So this is a major commitment by EMC and by Ingram Micro to make sure absolutely that you get exposure to the product, uh, more importantly that the product is tested and validated, and that everything that we're claiming uh, is accurate. And so that's, that's our commitment to this process, and that's why we're calling this a validated solution. The GM, Genetech, uh, specifically, we just didn't validate Isilon with the EMC, VNX, Cisco UCS. More importantly, we validated the application. So we took the Genetech software, um, which is, uh, um, Genetech is a, has a software package called Security Center, and Security Center has a component called Omnicast. We installed Omnicast archivers and security center directory servers. We installed those in an environment and using simulated video feeds and simulated uh, monitors, meaning monitors that would grab and view the data, we were able to perform extensive testing against the uh, infrastructure that was built on the EMC Isilon cluster and also on the Cisco UCS VMware environment. So this is basically the process that was used to validate and test. All of this was checked against Genetech engineers. And so we've spent time on the phone with Genetech engineers, making sure that our claims were accurate uh, and that they would support our claims. And anywhere we were overextending ourselves and promising too much, uh, they were very quick to tell us, no, we're not willing to quite say that. And so we were very careful to make sure that all the team members here were in agreement or, or have been in agreement on the claims being made in our documentation. You know, Guy, can I, this is Ken, I wanted to add one more. At the end of the day, the whole goal here is to, is to reduce risk. You know, our job in this lab and as EMC from a storage perspective is to really reduce the risk of you guys deploying these large-scale systems and having to worry about doing manual data migrations or the complexities that come along with traditional storage approaches. So you can trust that this document is detailed and thorough enough that as you go through it, you design the system around this document, that it will take out the risk of having a poor deployment. Exactly. And, you know, more important, we want, or not more important, but equally important, we want something that you can go to end users with that end users or customers will recognize that it, it is coming from industry leading partners uh, like Genetech, EMC, VMware, Cisco, um, and Bosch. But more importantly uh, than being recognized by industry leading manufacturers, that those industry leading manufacturers are going to aid and assist you in marketing this to your customer. And more important, and, and in addition to that, they're going to make sure that it works when you deploy to your customer and that you get all the support you need to quote it, size it, specify it, all those requirements. So this is not just us validating it, it's us creating an entire process to make sure that when you deliver this to an enterprise customer, that A, you look good, and B, that it works when you're done. Let's go ahead and talk about the implementation guide. 
This is uh, screenshots from the implementation guide that will be released. Um, those of you who are on the call will be privileged to get it to uh, be the first to be announced this when it reaches by, uh, publication by EMC. And so uh, it's being called the EMC Proven Infrastructure for Video Surveillance with Genetech Security Center. And uh, basically, uh, the implementation guide goes through an introduction, which talks about the business value, scope, uh, that sort of thing. But very quickly, it gets into the solution overview. So in the solution overview, we talk about the key components. We give you diagrams of the physical and a diagram of the logical view of the architecture. More importantly, in that section under solution overview, we give you an exact breakdown of all the components inside this reference architecture, not only by the description, but by the actual part number as well. We then have an implementation guide where we show specific details on how to do an implementation. It's not a 100% step-by-step. There is an expectation that the person who does this would have some familiarity with the technology, but it does make sure that we documented clearly the elements and the areas that need your attention when deploying this. This way we can reduce your engineer's time significantly to get this implementation up and functioning. We go through on each section, we go through the requirements. We talk about the sizing considerations. We talk about the prerequisites in terms of technology needed. And we talk about the, the configuration settings required. If there are any specific areas that need to be adjusted, we call specific attention to those. For example, during the Genetech software installation, there's a couple things that you have to do to make sure that it's working effectively, and we show you screenshots of where that is. Finally, the implementation guide has a high availability implementation. We take extra time to show you, if you have a customer that requires high availability, we talk about how you can do that in either an active-active or an active-passive manner. Finally, the tail end of the document covers the solution validation. Here's where we go through the exact software by version number, the exact platforms by part number that we tested and what the results of that testing were at EMC Labs. And so you'll see a breakdown of all the validated hardware and of the testing results. You are free to use these testing results and these validation results to your customer to prove to them that this is a validated solution and that it's worthy of their consideration. All right, uh, we're now going to uh, transfer. By the way, I, I've gotten a couple of questions about it. I just want to make sure that you know this video presentation, this conference is being recorded and it will be published to YouTube and we will be sending you a link to it if you want to view this later. Let's now talk about what I consider the most important thing we're going to talk about today, and that is how do you get support on this if you decide that this is something that you want to chase? So let's say you're uh, somebody who's uh, already been involved in physical security, but you would like to adapt this type of high-end technology in your practice. You're going to need help, and you're going to need key partnerships. If you're a, a large integrator with customers that have a need and a demand for video surveillance, you're also going to need key partnerships and you're also going to need assistance. We have a team standing by to help you engage in those relationships and to fast track those relationships uh, for those of you who are uh, fit the, the role and the requirement to be the, the resale that would be able to sell this type of solution. So I'm going to now introduce Sean again. Sean, if you could just talk about your role in making sure that we have a single point of contact for anybody interested in trying to get on with the uh, FISEC program. If Sean's still alive. All right, I waited the customary uh, 30 seconds to see if Sean uh, needed to unmute himself. So unless he interrupts me, I will, I will fill in for him. So Sean is going to be your single point of contact for all FISEC partnership uh, requirements. All of the vendors that we have talked about today have 
partnerships that you can engage in. From Bosch to Genetech to EMC to Cisco to VMware, all of them require special partnerships. For Genetech and for Bosch, Sean is your primary contact manager and can make sure you get involved with and get talking to the right people to get you into, into business doing this as fast as possible. Um, we also have on board uh, Brian and Clint who can help with the EMC side of the relationship. Do you guys want to chime in and talk about if people are interested in becoming an EMC partner or if they're an EMC partner and do not have Isilon experience, what would be their next step? Clint, do you want to take that yeah, I was going to just jump in and say that. If so it, in terms of if you are a, a, a large physical security partner who doesn't have a storage practice yet or, uh, you know, or is, or is interested in developing a storage practice with EMC, there's a very simple process to get you signed up as an EMC reseller. Um, it's, a, it's a simple click through on a website and, and within usually you know, six to eight hours we get the response back to, and the welcome kit. Um, and, and we have a team here at Ingram dedicated just to the EMC line of business, um, which Brian and myself are part of, and I know we have Rebecca Moses on the line as well. Rebecca is um, our senior market development specialist, and she is in charge of the recruit and onboarding of our new partners. We run biweekly webinar series to talk folks through the, um, the processes and, and, and the step-by-steps of dealing with EMC in, in general. Um, we do introductions to our field-based teams um, for those partners that need to be spun up a little bit quicker. Um, myself, I run um, educational webinar series around different uh, product sets from Ingram, including, from EMC, including the Isilon products, um, basically to help the partners understand the opportunities there. So we have a whole host of, of, of folks here to help you guys get onboarded and up and running and selling um, EMC as quick as possible. And we have a, a host of, of folks here that do a lot of the processes for you, whether it's our deal registration program or special pricing requests or, or configuration program um, or, or different configurations that may come out of, out of this type of opportunity. We have the, the, those folks here to help you as well. So reach out to us afterwards and we can get that process started. And, then, and as I said, it's, it's quickly, um, it's a quick process and it's, it's, it's a free process. There's, it doesn't cost you anything to become an EMT reseller. Clint, the other thing I wanted to add on top of that, um, in addition to all the support folks we have, uh, you know, on the inside, uh, we do have, uh, you know, field channel account executives uh, out in the field uh, in geographical regions, and uh, probably most importantly is we have field technical consultants throughout the country to help you, uh, if you are new to Iceland, to uh, help you understand the product, and I know... Uh, some, if not most of them, have had an opportunity to uh, get to Guy's lab and uh, play around with the Isilon box and, and see the solutions uh, firsthand as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the field technical consultants are versed in all things EMC and, and as well as um, all things data center, uh, so they can really speak to a lot of different opportunities that you may come across. Great. Um, I just want to emphasize, uh, since Sean wasn't here to talk about it, um, not everybody can instantly sign up to be a Genetech partner. Um, there is a process of qualification that you'll have to go through. Um, so e to sell the solution, you'll either have to work with an existing Genetech partner or become one. Um, Sean will be your key contact on all things Genetech related. Um, I have Eric here from Genetech. Do you want to mention anything about the Genetech Partner Program, how great it is, uh, Eric, uh, while, 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 you got, while you got a second here? Yeah, thank you, Guy. So generally, uh, for a partner request, we would uh, process that through our, our uh, regional sales managers who have coverage across uh, North America. So if you're not an existing dealer already, then it's something that we could help support you, uh, support you with and uh, begin the process of uh, enlisting you. So if you have any questions there, you can contact sales at genetech.com. Great. And uh, like I said, Sean is a, you can call him right there on his phone number or email him and he can direct you as well and get you, he can work with Genetech to get you in front of the right person. And so feel free to reach out to Sean uh, at any time. Uh, last but not least is Bosch. Um, Bosch, uh, it's pretty easy to buy Bosch cameras. It's not that difficult. But Bosch uh, does have also a dealer program. Uh, Brian, do you want to address the greatness of the Bosch partnership program? If you're still on. 
going once. Sorry, guy. Uh, that's all right. I figured you were on mute or something. <laughs> I'm having mute issues here. Can you hear me okay? We got you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I missed your question for me, Guy. Could you repeat that? Uh, we, uh, just real quick, we only got a few minutes left. We're, we're just talking about partnership programs. I know that most of our customers can buy Bosch cameras without any difficulty, but there is a partnership program with Bosch, and I wanted you just to address it real quick. Sure. Well, we're in, and actually, right now we're uh, offering some pretty nice features of, of buying through Ingram. Um, we're currently running a, a bundle special with Genetech where you can get uh, a reduced price on um, a Genetech head end software as well as Bosch encoders. So, from time to time, we put together specials like this with our other partners out there to offer competitive solutions. In this case, offering a nice solution to move from an analog solution into the IP video world, which, uh, like you spoke on before, is the trend that everybody is starting to follow. So from time to time, we, we work with Ingram to put together different programs like that to find, a video, to find affordable solutions to move from the analog world into the IP video world. Great. Um, appreciate it very much, everybody. Uh, finally, I'd like to end with, you know, uh, kind of what's next. Um, just give me one second here. I may have, uh, Sean may have joined us. Sean, are you there? Can you hear us? Jai, I, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know why you can't. I can hear you now. Yeah. So go ahead. Sean, oh. you've got you've got a minute. So uh, Excellent. Say everything um, I just said over again in one minute. Yeah, no, I so – I apologize for the audio problems, but essentially the, the slide that Guy had uh, shown you guys with the three contacts, really to simplify the process, what I'd like you to do if you are interested is just to reach out to me. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we, we have a very large team uh, across the country from an Ingram Micro standpoint to engage uh, in whatever level uh, you're at, so whether that's the design or the implementation. But just for the ease, uh, reach out to me first, and I can kind of point you guys in the right direction, either from an Ingram Micro perspective or manufacturer perspective. All right. Thank Excellent. you very much. Okay. Um, so we are now going to um, move on to our last and final slide. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, today is not the last engagement. Today is just the first engagement. We will have uh, a variety of documentation coming out, including the publication of the implementation guide I talked about. We'll have further webinars, and now I'd like to introduce Andrew from the EMC team. If Andrew, you're on, if you want to address address what the what our resellers can do next uh, to get engaged in this pro process. Thank you, guy. I'm actually at one of the EMC resellers, Aqueduct in the Boston area. Our entire sales team here just went through this, and this is awesome. What I would thank you thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, the ask here is really to look at your customer portfolio, think about who this would fit, and go talk to them. And we together are really going to drive this market. Look at the lines that you carry today. If you are a Bosch partner, you don't carry the other lines and you have interest in it, please reach out to the Ingram Micro Resell resources on this line because those are the people that will tell you what you have to do to become an EMC partner or to become a Genetech partner. All right, that's the whole point of this program is to make it easy. Uh, we are going to have webcasts on a monthly basis that are going to be dear – detailed webcast that you can invite customers to. There'll be internal ones for partners only where we talk about specific pieces and do some more detailed education. But once again, big thank you for joining and I look forward to all of you participating in this. Thanks. Bye. All right. Thank you everybody for joining. That concludes our webinar for today. I'd like to appreciate those who've spoken today and the manufacturers that have joined this process. I'd really like to thank EMC for all the generous time they've dedicated to testing and validating the solution. I'm real excited to be able to, well, A, I'm excited to be finally done with the, 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 the document, but I'm real excited that we're going to get to publish it this week. Uh, look forward to hearing you more. As always, I'm Guy Reams. I'm always open for assistance anytime you need it here at Physical Security University. Please reach out to Sean with any questions about the FISEC program and appreciate your time. We will be sending out a link with the recording of this uh, webinar, and have a good day. Thank you, Guy. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, everybody.